This is a pre-section 7.1 video for Calculus 2 where we're switching gears and uh, focusing on applications of the integral in Chapter 7. In this, chap in this particular area, we're trying to find area between two curves. So, and it's a basic concept here. We know that when we're integrating, we're finding area in the curves. You've been programmed by your professors about that. But here's the idea that if I'm looking for the area between two curves, whether it's located above or below the x-axis, it doesn't matter. There's this idea of when I'm looking at these, the region between the two curves, which would be this particular region in here that I'm looking for, and I want to figure out the area between these two curves, I want to do basically the idea of integrate the top minus integrate the bottom. And the reason for that is that when I integrate the top curves, it gives me the area all the way back down to the x-axis. And when I integrate the bottom curve, it gives me that area between that curve back to the x-axis. So to get the region between the two, you do basically top minus bottom, and that gives the area between two curves. And we're doing this with respect to the x-axis. So we have this basic formula for area between two curves, the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x, or top minus bottom dx. All right, or another way you could write this is uh, the integral from a to b of y top minus y bottom dx, because y equals these functions will be in terms of x, that's why the dx. It's also using what we call vertical slicing as I put this little areas in here. And of course, you can also emphasize this, that areas between two curves could also be equal to f of y, which means x equals the functions in terms of y, but that will be a right function minus a left function. If you don't have tops and bottoms, then try rights and left. But if the function's in terms of y, then we've got to integrate with respect to y. It'll be right minus left dy or top minus bottom dx. So here's the idea and the basic formulas that you use to be able to get the area between two curves. So let's take a look at some of the problems I've set up for you guys that should mimic something on your quizzes here. Uh, question, sketch and find the area between the curves bounded by y equals 1 and y equals 1 over x squared for 1 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. This chapter 7 stuff is going to be very visual, so you really want to be able to make sure you can graph this stuff and make sure you're, uh, we're going to be using a lot of calculator and technology on this particular stuff. Well, this one I really don't need a calculator for. I can probably graph this by hand, but since I brought my calculator, I can actually graph it. So one of the curves is y equals 1, and the other curve, and the autofocus take over here, is y equals 1 over x squared. So 1 divided by x squared. That and I'm just going to do a zoom six. And on this particular problem, we are trying to emphasize this area is in the first quadrant here. So, because I can tell you that between x is one and x is two, so when I focus on that between one and two, so I can actually take my window and change it, I always go be a little bit beyond what you want to look at. So, x is one to two. I'm going to go from something like uh, 0.5 to 3. I didn't want to put 0 in there because I'm going to do a zoom fit. And 0 would actually uh, not exist on my function, so that would make it have a real pro tough time in terms of my thing. But this, you know, just a little bit above either side of the curve, this was uh, 1 uh, to 3, so, I mean, excuse me, this is a 0.5 to 3, so we're looking at, you know, 1 to 2 right here. So we're talking about this particular area in here. Drawing this stuff is most important. It is very visual stuff. So if you think about it, y equals 1 over x squared. It's the line that comes in here, so a little half of a, a perbola there. Looks like that. I got y equals 1. y equals 1 comes in here and does this. Here's y equals 1. And now we're talking about between 1, x is 1, so I plug in 1, 1 over 1 squared is 1, so right here 1 is 1, so that's that point of intersection there, all the way over here to, and I'll just declare this to be 2. 
So you got to draw this in. One of the toughest parts on this particular, these kind of problems is making sure that you get the right region. So I got y equals 1 and y equals 1 over x squared. And we want to capture area between the two, between 1 and 2. Between 1 and 2, this is the area that we're looking for. So I want to figure out what that exact area is. So area, and I have a distinct top and bottom. So I'm going to integrate top function minus bottom function. So this will be a dx because my functions are in terms of x. Anytime I do top and bottom, I'll do dx. If I do right, left, I'll do dy. So the top function is y equals 1 minus the bottom function is 1 over x squared. Top minus bottom. But you got to put your bounds in there. So my bounds are given to me between 1 and 2. So we're going to clean this up to integrate this guy. So this will be the integral of 1 minus x to the negative 2 dx from 1 to 2. Basic forms here. Integral of 1 with respect to x is x. Minus integral of x to the negative 2 is add 1 over add 1. x to negative 1 over negative 1. Evaluated from 1 to 2. So this would be x minus a minus makes it a plus. 1 over x when you clean them up. Evaluated from 1 to 2. And then according to the rules, you plug in top minus plug in bottom. So this would be 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 plus 1 over 1. So cleaning this guy up, this would be well, 1 over 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. This is 2. And this is 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. I'll just write it like this because I'm subtracting it. 2 and a half minus 2. This leaves me with a half. And so the area bounded between these two curves, between y equals 1 and y equals 1 over x squared in this particular region, is 1 half. And of course, understanding this particular region and stuff is very, very important. So look at the next problem. The next problem is asking you, find the points of intersection for the functions y equals 6x minus x squared and y equals x. Now, again, it's very visual, but you actually do not actually need to graph this thing to find the points of intersection. I'm trying to remind you of your old college algebra pre-calculus days here. To find points of intersection, you need to set the two equations equal to each other. So this is y equals 6x minus x squared, and this is y equals x. So I'm going to set my two equations, 6x minus x squared, equal to y equals x. They're both y equals, so I set my two functions in terms of x equal to each other, 6x minus x squared equals x. And now I'm going to solve this thing, classic quadratic, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. I would subtract x from both sides. This cancels here. This gives me 5x minus x squared equals 0. It's a binomial, two terms. I can pull a factor out of it. I can pull an x out. That leaves me with a 5 minus x equal to 0. I set each factor has an x in it equal to 0, and I solve. I get x equals 0, and solving for x here, I'd add x to both sides, and x would be equal to 5. But they did say points of intersection. So to answer this question, you need an ordered pair. Because when this stuff, because of that top minus bottom dx, or right minus left dy, sometimes you need the x variables, sometimes you need the y variables. So when they want the points of intersection, we're going to give them both. We'll give x and y coordinates. x is equal to 0, y x is also equal to 5, so there's my two points, but I need the y coordinate. To get the y coordinate, you can plug it into either one of these two different equations, because you're going to get the same y coordinate, because they're points of intersection. When I plug in x is 0, this will give me 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. And when I plug in 5, when I plug in 5, y equals x, but x is 5, so y is 5, but just to prove it to you, 6 times 5 is 30, minus 5 squared is 25, 30 minus 25 is 5. So it doesn't matter which equation you plug into. So these are my points of intersection. But the one thing I wanted to do here was to show you it by hand. So you can do this stuff by hand, because you're not always given a calculator. But in this problem, let's say we were given a calculator, so I'm going to sit there and clean out my old function there and go back up here and type in these equations. The equation was 6x minus x squared and y equals x. 
And when I graph it, I always start with a zoom 6, zoom standard, negative 10 by 10, negative 10 by 10 screen. There is the parabola, 6x minus x squared, and there's the line, y equals x. So the points of intersection are here and here, and you can use your calculator button to find points of intersection. Second, calculate intersection, number 5. It's going to ask you a couple of questions here. Is that the first curve? Yep, pretty much. I put two curves in there. Is that the second curve? Yep, pretty much. I'm guessing it's right about there at the origin. And my first point of intersection is 0, 0. Then I start over again. Second, calculate intersection. Is that my first curve? Yep. Is that my second curve? Yep. But now I want to talk about this point of intersection, so I want to guess. And you, the closer you guess to the point of intersection, it kind of zeroes in on it. And it gives me a 0.55. So there we go. Uh, you could even according to the calculator that I did get my point of intersections correct. Okay. So let's look at the next question here. Now that we got the point of intersection, let's go ahead and find the area bounded by these two curves. Well, like I said, we just looked at the calculator. So we have our visual perspective on this. This was a parabola. This is a classic line. So we have our parabola here. We have our line, y equals x. Always label this stuff, y equals x. This is y equals 6x minus x squared. This is the point 0.55, five, and this is clearly the origin. And your y-axis, your x-axis. And we're trying to get the area between the two curves. So to calculate the area between these two curves, I'm going to do a classic integral of top minus bottom dx. So the pump pumps, that's why I have to really look at the picture on this stuff, because I've got to identify, looking at the region, there's my region inside, what is the function on top? Well, that's the problem. So that would be 6x minus x squared. This would be the top function. Minus the bottom function, and my bottom function is y equals x. Now, these, this putting parentheses around everything is very important because that negative will distribute if I have more than one term. And my bounds are, since I'm doing dx, I want my x numbers. This is x equals 0. This was x equals 5. So my bounds are from 0 to 5. So this is the integral that sets up the area between two curves. And that's, what, again, what a big part of Chapter 7 is all about is emphasizing the applications of the integral. So, but if I wanted to do this, first I would clean them up. This would be integral from 0 to 5 of 6x minus x squared, pretty much just minus x. Next thing I would do is combine like terms. Integral from 0 to 5, 6x minus x is 5x minus x squared dx. Now I integrate using my standard properties. 5 is a constant, leave it alone. Integral x to the first is x squared over 2. Minus general x squared is x cubed over 3. Evaluated from 0 to 5. And then I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus. Plug in top minus plug in bottom. This will be 5 times 5 squared over 2 minus 5 cubed over 3. Plug in top minus plug in bottom. But the nice thing about plugging in 0 in this particular function, be careful of the function, so 0 squared is pretty much 0 times anybody is 0. 0 cubed is still 0. 0 minus 0 is still 0. So now all I've got to do is clean up this thing. 5 squared is 25 times 5 is 125, so I've got 125 halves minus 125 thirds. So, cleaning that up, 125 halves minus 125 thirds is, for those people who love decimals, 20.833333. Or, for those people who love fractions, you end up getting, of course, 125 over 6. And usually I have my students do something like this, but your professor may or may or not emphasize this, the idea of units squared. And why units squared? Because you actually calculated the area between these two curves. Even though I didn't give you units, I, I want to emphasize that it's area, so I use units squared. When I want a distance, it's units squared. Excuse me, when I want a distance, it's units. When I want area, it's units squared. When I want volume, it's units cubed. Well, let's take a look at this last problem here. Find the area bounded by the functions. y equals e to the x. Throw something different at you. y equals 0. 
and the lines x equals 0 and x equals natural log of 3. Uh, the first thing you want to do is graph this guy. Get a visual perspective of this. This stuff is very visual. y equals e to the x is a classic exponential function. Horizontal is on one side and exponentially grows on the other. There's the function y equals e to the x. y equals 0. y equals 0 is another word for the actual x-axis. y equals 0 is the x-axis. But then they gave me x equals 0. x equals 0 is the same as the uh, y-axis. There's x equals 0. And natural log of 3, x equals natural log of 3. x equals is a vertical line, vertical line. So there it is, vertical line right there. And that would be x equals the natural log of 3. So we're talking about this region right here. Once again, I have a distinct top part of my region and a bottom part. If I did not have a top bottom, then I would start looking at rights and lefts. And your professors are going to really uh, emphasize this idea of rights and lefts and really focus on particular functions, x equals, and what they look like in terms of y and things like that. So there's lots of problems. But this is just a pre-section video, so I'm doing all the nice ones and everybody in terms of x here. But so to get the area, integral of top minus bottom dx. And the other formula is going to be right minus left, dy, which means I would have to turn all my functions in terms of y functions. But this one, I have a distinct top. Top part is e to the x. Minus the bottom, the bottom that defines this thing is y equals 0, or 0 dx, between my number bounds, which is 0 to the natural log of 3. So I'll write this again and clean it up. This would be integral from 0 to the natural log of 3 of e to the x minus 0, who cares? So this is going to give me integral e to the x is e to the x evaluated from 0 to the natural log of 3. According to the fundamental theorems, I'll plug in top minus plug in bottom. So this would be e natural log of 3 minus e to the 0. But be careful when you clean this up. Now, e's and natural logs are inverses, so they cancel. You're left with 3 minus, however, Plugging in 0 doesn't always give me 0. Case in point, what's e to the 0? 1. So the answer is 3 minus 1, which is 2 units square for those people emphasizing that you found the area between these two curves. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and I know your professors are going to sit there and work hard with you guys in terms of top minus bottom, getting a visual perspective, and also that right minus left. So be prepared for doing lots of graphs. And again, it's very visual. So I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you on the next video.